this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the Antec Vortex 360 all-in-one cooler. Here seen in the Antec P20C case, where I've built it and I've crafted it alongside Antec's RGB fusion fans, and it looks pretty decent, I hope you'll agree. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the setup process for it, the build and installation, the wiring, and all the other logic and everything you need to know. So hopefully, by the end, you'll know what to do if you're planning on doing a similar build. Now, for reference, I'm using an Intel 12th Gen Core i9-12900K for this build. So I'm going to show you the setup process for LGA 1700. But this all-in-one cooler will work with a variety of different boards. You can see that we have LGA 1700 standoffs included in the box. But you also have the mounting hardware for AMD's TR4, AM4, and for various different Intel setups as well, with the 1156, for example, and others. So it is possible to use it with a variety of different motherboard options. So that's worth noting. And I'll leave all the specs in the description as well as links so you can find out more about it. But you can see it's all clearly labeled. And there's also a pretty decent manual in the box as well. But I want to show you the steps in video form so you can see all the wiring logic and the setup process for this build and get an idea of how to do it in a detailed way that will hopefully prove useful. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move off the AMD stuff because we're going to be using Intel here. So I want to set up and show you what to do there. And I'm going to set everything aside that we're going to need. And you will see that there are a number of different screws included in the box. You've got some nice long radiator ones that you can see here. The smaller ones in the bottom right there, which allow you to mount the radiator to the case. Some tiny ones for mounting the bracket to the pump head and other bits as well. Now the pump head itself has a few different cables coming out of it. One of them is for powering it from your motherboard and the other one is for the RGB lighting because as you saw at the beginning it has some RGB effects on the pump head and obviously on the fans as well but more on that in a little while. There's also some stickers on there as well so some peel around the outside and on top as well. So you need to make sure you peel those off and note there's also a sticker on the copper plate too. So for the Intel build, you use these brackets that are included. We need to install them on the pump head and they will help with the standoff setup process, but basically they're slightly magnetic. So if you see it this way, you can see they push underneath the little flaps there and then they're held in place with the tiny little screws that are included in the box. And you're basically just screwing those down and securing these brackets in place. Use different brackets if you're going to be doing an AMD build. So you'll see they're a different shape. So you can't really go wrong here with the logic. So this will work with all the different Intel builds. But in this case, as I said, I'm using an i9-12900K with LGA 1700 socket motherboard. And I'm assuming that you've installed your CPU, but if you haven't already, there's how to do it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up the motherboard so that it's ready for this build before we put it into the case. So we've got the back plate here that you can see, which has a sticker on it. So it's got a little cover on there with a double-sided sticker on. Basically allows you to secure the back plate to the back of the motherboard. But you'll also need to push the standoffs out to the four corners the furthest points of using LGA 1700 because that's the largest setting on this and then peel that sticker cover off so that it will secure nicely to the back. Obviously it's important to secure this down and then also to screw the standoffs in nice and tight this so that we'll have good placement of the CPU cooler onto the CPU itself. I mean that's nice and secure as you go through. So there's that straight installation and now we're going about setting up the rest of it. So on the other side, we obviously need to use the LGA 1700 standoffs that you saw me demonstrating earlier on. So they were in the little bag marked 1700 or 17XX. And then you're basically just screwing those into the four corners. Now you use your thumb and finger to do this, but you need to make sure they are nice and tight. So there's no wobble and it's nicely secured. So just go round those and secure them into each of the four corners. Obviously, we'll sped up the process here slightly. And then that's then ready and prepared for the mounting. Now, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things here just for ease of use. So what we're going to do eventually, once we set it up, is to seat the CPU cooler down like this with the tubes at the bottom of the pump. But you will note, as I said, there are cables coming out of this. One is a cable that runs to the AIO pump header. Now on this motherboard, it's on the bottom left, just below the CPU. 
and it may vary so you may find it's in different places on different motherboards for example i've got another board here where it's in the top right and you'll see it's marked aio pump so check your motherboard manual if you're not too sure where that is because that's well worth checking out and trying to find out where that is and then we've got that logic so just keep that in mind we're obviously going to do that in the case later on the next is sort of working out where you're going to mount the radiator and how you're going to set it up you will have options depending on the case that you're building in this is obviously a 360 mil radiator i'm planning on top mounting mine but you could front mount it as an alternative i've done a video recently on how best to place a radiator in your case and where to do it and what gives you the best results but it's worth thinking about the aesthetics and also the cooling performance and what's going to happen when you mount it in there. So for example, demonstrate in the Antec P20C, it can take a 360 mil radiator on top or on the front. But what I found was trying to get it in the top is quite fiddly. More importantly, if you put it with the tubes at the rear, they then interfere with the rear fan. If you don't have a rear fan, that's not a problem. But in this instance, I decided I was better off mounting it with the tubes facing towards the front. And then the setup will then look like this roughly. So we're then working out how to place it. We've got all that logic set up. And the next step is then to wire the fans into it. So the idea here is simply going to be to place those fans. So the cables run towards the back. We put the fans facing towards us. So the ring of the RGB lighting ring is facing towards us because that's where the air is being sucked from. So in the instance of mounting it on the top, I'm going to be sucking air from the case and exhausting through the radiator and out of the top. So you then use the long screws to secure it down into place. It's very important to make sure that you secure these nicely, but also, as I said, that those cables are facing the right direction, which is part of why we work out the logic of how it's going to fit in the case beforehand because obviously you don't want those cables running towards the front of the case because that would end up being messy and we need to make sure that we tidy things up and set them up at the rear. This also comes with a nice controller for controlling the fans RGB lighting as well and the setup is actually pretty straightforward for both the RGB and for the power. So I'm going to go through that setup process. If you're interested, I've done a separate guide on the fusion fans and how to wire them up if you bind them separately. So if you want to use these sorts of fans throughout your entire case, I've done a guide on that as well as a full detailed guide on the P20C as well. Now you'll find when the fans are set up, you have these fan power cables that you can see here. There's a splitter cable included, which enables you to connect up the three fan power connectors from the fans into this splitter. And then they'll just run it into a single connector on your motherboard. This makes life a lot easier because it means you don't have multiple cables running through your case. But it also means that you can set it up so we can connect to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. So you'll have the AIO pump running to the AIO header and then the, these running to the CPU fan header, which is usually on the top right and side of the motherboard. That will then give your motherboard full control over both the fans and the pump to ensure that it can keep everything running nice and cool. So you can see the marking here, a CPU fan. That's where the cable would plug in. Again, we're not doing it right now. I'm just showing you the easy sort of view of where you'd connect these up. Now, included in the box is also this RGB controller. It's a tiny little thing. You'll see it has four connectors on it, and that's for the RGB lighting. It also has a magnetic back, by the way, so a little magnet on the back there, so it'll easily clip to a metal case. And then it has SATA power and an RGB cable. You'll notice there's a mode button on it. So you can press that and cycle between the various RGB lighting modes. But you can also connect this to your motherboard and then sync the RGB lighting with other devices, including Antec's own fans and other RGB things. So what we need to do is connect the RGB cable from the fans into this controller. Now it is a little bit fiddly. There's three pins for each of these and they are split into two and one so they're sort of grouped together so you can only put it in one way but do take care doing it because it's really easy to bend these pins in my experience and so just try not to force it in make sure you're putting it in the right way around so the three fans will plug into that and then you can also run the rgb cable from the pump head into it as well so it will take all four connections for the rgb lighting and ensure that that's synced across all the different devices you can alternatively plug it into an RGB head on your motherboard if you want to separate that out. So you do have that option and I'll show you that in a second. But this is what that controller looks like. It's a nice compact controller, sits at the back of the case, but you can use that mode button to change the RGB lighting 
if you want to, although that won't particularly have easy access. So the other thing you can do is you can connect the five volt RGB cable that comes out of this controller to the five volt header on your motherboard. Now, most modern motherboards will have one or two or more of these headers on there. You'll see one example here. Again, take care when plugging this in not to force it, but you'll see that this has three pins and you can just plug that in and then you'll get control via your motherboard software of the RGB lighting. In this case, it'd be Azusa's Armory Crate that has some RGB controls in there. And then you can sync up the lighting with the motherboard and the fans and the pump head all from that software, which will make life a bit easier. So once the motherboard's installed in the case, we then need to use the thermal paste. This is included in the box. And um, most people would recommend using a pea-sized amount in the middle. And then if you seat the pump down over the top, that should then in theory squash the thermal paste out. I personally prefer to actually spread the paste out myself and there is a little spatula included in the box to do this. So basically making sure that there's a nice thin covering across the entirety of the top of the CPU and that will then ensure good thermal coverage and conductivity to make sure that it runs nice and cool. If you do find that the CPU is running hot, my experience is usually a few simple problems that could be the cause. One is there's not good spread of the thermal paste, or there's too much or too little thermal paste, or that you just haven't seated the pump down properly and secured it. If there's a loose fit and it hasn't got good contact, then you may find that your CPU is just running a bit too hot, so it's worth checking those things out. The next thing to do is to remove the sticker from the pump head. Don't forget to do this because that will obviously stop the contact. And again, that will ensure that your CPU runs too hot. So just take that sticker off the copper plate and then we're going to seat it down on top. So now we're nearing the end of that build process. What we're going to do is just seat this CPU cooler down on top of the CPU and then secure it with the standoff screws. This is the important part I was talking about, making sure the thumb screws that you put on top of the standoffs are tightened enough that there's good contact with the CPU to ensure good cooling. You do need to take care not to over tighten it though, so it is worth keeping that in mind. But I have found that you can tighten it with your thumb and then just adjust that final bit with a screwdriver. If you do it too tight though, you do risk damaging the pins on the motherboard. So it's worth bearing that in mind. So once you've done all that, obviously connect up those cables that I already showed you, CPU fans, go to the CPU fan header, AIO pump from the pump itself. And then you should find if you've got the RGB connector set up and the power connector, it should work nicely. What you'll see here is I didn't have that RGB connector plugged in. So the control for the RGB lighting is obviously different. So you see you've got Antex Fusion fans on there on the case itself and then obviously the same fans on the radiator but the rgb is different but if you connect it up to the 5 volt header you can then sync it all from your motherboard or alternatively you can just set two controllers to the same mode but the end result here looks pretty nifty i'm sure you'll agree and then you basically can control the fan speed and things from your motherboard bios and the software included with your motherboard as well and then have the control over that we've got a pretty nice looking cooler which should hopefully run nice and cool, and it looks great too. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Check out the other videos linked in the description to find out more and see other useful tips and tricks. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.